Do you guys want to make $58,000 a month having your own landscaping business? That's the life of Brian Linson, founder and owner of BL Landscapes, who started his company with a two-man crew and is about to break a million dollars this year. On this episode, we're going to talk to Brian about his keys to success. He's going to share a little bit about how he built his client list and also tips and advice on managing hiring staff. All these things are really crucial aspects for really any business, so you'll want to stick around to hear his tips and advice. What's a good day for you financially? About $4,000 in a day. In a day. Which is nice. What's the secret to your tremendous growth for the company? One of the biggest factors of BL Landscaping's success and growth is their strong customer and community engagement. Not one single customer complaint in the last six years. Brian's advice and tips on how to keep customers happy and have them come back is going to help you as well have the same customer satisfaction rate. You should be making a good 50% profit margin. That's really, I think, the key to our growth and our success. Brian has some very helpful information for aspiring landscapers as well. He's going to talk about what kind of equipment you need, choosing your services, pricing, etc. And most importantly, how to market a brand new landscaping company. If you can't afford to buy a $2,500 saw, and you can rent this saw for mm -hmm. $100 a day. We buy the tools we need for the job, because then the next time, that's all profit. If you guys like the sound of this interview, make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss any of the stellar Upflip content that we've got coming for you. Let's go meet Brian. Brian, it's good to be here with you. Thanks for your time and we can't wait to share your story. Good to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, why you started the landscaping company, and a little bit of backdrop on that. Sure. I started a landscape company um, just after years of working for other people and, and uh, doing essentially what I do here, but not really reaping the benefits of that. My first couple jobs were working at nurseries and uh, public gardens and florists and stuff like that. And uh, it's just always been a passion of mine. And it just finally got to a point where I needed to step out on my own to uh, achieve anything more than just average, you know, to, to actually take it to the next level. Right. So you were doing this for somebody else at 15 bucks an hour. Yes. You figured out, I could probably do this on my own. That's where it really hit me the most is that I, w I was doing all the estimating, making sure all the materials were there on time, doing all the work, running the crews and everything. And, uh, and I finally realized that the only thing I wasn't doing was collecting a paycheck that was decent. How do you decide on pricing, estimating? Can you walk us through that process a little bit? I kind of break down. I, when I go out and I look at a project, I, I walk around, I kind of measure materials, get an idea of, of how many materials I'm going to need of each thing, soil, plantings, rocks, gravel, whatever it may be. And then I kind of figure out separately from that how long it'll take me. So I break each project down into separate sections. And then I figure out how much time each section will take me and how many materials that'll take. And the customers like that too. When I write my estimates out, I, I write my estimates out like that. So, so that they see the fence is separate from the paver patio or from the retaining wall or from the gravel pass or from the planting. That way they can look at it and I don't break every material down separately for them. Um, but we give them a, a good idea of what each little individual project costs. That way, two things, that serves, they can actually see where that money is going and being divided up. And they can also cut sections out if they want to without right. me having to rewrite a whole new estimate. So Brian, we're here in one of your sites, residential property. Uh, place looks amazing. The things you're doing are really cool. So walk us through kind of everything that we see here. Sure. So this site started off as a kind of a blank slate with a bunch of grade issues. Um, and one of the first things we did was come in and get all the grade established, get everything cut out, build the rock walls and the block retaining walls to correct all that. Um, you know, other than that, we've got 
We've got these gravel paths that are compacted gravel paths okay. with welded steel borders. These are all fully welded and fabricated on site. Um, and this is above and beyond what I've normally seen. I mean, metal for borders, this, yeah. this stuff lasts forever. And, these, and the nice thing is it does, it lasts forever. Um, it, it, it will get a little thin coating of rust on the surface, which will uh, blend in really well with the landscape. And, it, and it's nice and solid. It'll keep the gravel out of the bedding areas and the mulch from the bedding areas out of the gravel path. Let's talk about your client base. When you got started, how did you build your client base? And what are some tips you can share with our viewers uh, and advice on how they can follow that strategy as well? So, I mean, one of the first things that we did when we were looking for our first clients was reach out to real estate agents. Um, okay. They are constantly dealing with people that are purchasing new homes or moving into a home and uh, you know want to upgrade their landscape. Mm -hmm. The other thing we did was your local suppliers, build a relationship with them, most nurseries, Home um, Depot, and Home Depot local places stuff. where you can buy soil and materials, go in there, get some business cards. When we started, we had some cheap business cards made. Um, Who cares about what they and, uh, anyway, right? You know, go put those places and, and start telling people and throwing your name out there I mean really that's the biggest thing is just get your name out there to anyone you can mm -hmm. make yourself a, a Facebook business page and and just start going at it there's gonna be a lot of times where uh, you know the work isn't coming in as fast as you want it to mm -hmm. and uh, you'll doubt yourself and wonder if you are doing the right thing but to be successful I mean just keep pushing at it just keep trying and and reaching out to more and more people and and uh as you go you know keep your quality consistent and high quality and that will in itself will sell more projects i see you got a lot of equipment brian tell us a little bit about each how much it costs maybe and, and sure. kind of the best way to source it so we have a lot of different tools that we use for cutting our pavers, especially this. Uh, this is a water table saw. This is nice for doing straight cuts. Um, the saw is an invaluable tool to us. Um, cost about $2,500 new. Not cheap. Um, but like I said, you really can't be having a saw like this. We also have a um, demolition saw that we use, which is a handheld saw and we cut our curves in the pavers with that. Mm -hmm. okay. Compactor, this is for compacting our base uh, to lay our pavers in. We compact all our gravel paths with this. Our generator um, is pretty important to us because a lot of the stuff we run, these big saws for the cutting the pavers and the welder that we use for welding all this stuff, it draws yeah, too much that. current. On a new construction house, sometimes they don't even have power yeah. ready. You're not dependent so on So we can just set up our stuff and go but you can live without that when you're starting out, right? Yeah, necessarily. Yeah, so that's if, if one of the things. On your budget and when the, you're you know, out. the nice thing is, there's a lot of this stuff too. When you're first starting out, you can rent this stuff. Oh. So if you can't afford to buy a $2,500 saw, um, you can go to a rental equipment store and you can rent this saw for mm -hmm. $100 a day. Um, factor that into your budget. Yeah, you know, you know and you just kind of factor that into your estimates. So you're not limited when you start out with landscaping. Almost all this stuff you can rent. You know, for landscaping business, it's a really visual product. Mm -hmm. So the more pictures you can put up, I mean, Facebook is a great tool. Instagram is a great tool um, for us because it's such a visual product that you can post pictures every day and people can see it and then they can see what they want. It's just like Pinterest. Homeowners right. love Pinterest. And it's because they just get a bunch of ideas and that inspires them to do things on their own home. And uh, it's the same thing with our landscaping business. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it. Get a page built or, or do your own page and then um, just advertise. I mean, you don't have to spend money on it. Advertise mm -hmm. it on your own friends list. Get people to share it. The more people that see your content, the more uh, exposure you'll get and that will translate into more work. That makes sense. People love before and afters. So anytime we start a new project, I walk around the whole job before we touch the ground and I take pictures from all different angles. And that way, when we're done with a project, we can take those same pictures because uh, that really can show people 
what a dramatic difference whatever you're doing is. Whether right. we're just doing a cleanup or we're doing a complete landscape. Surprisingly. Those before and after pictures, people love those. What's a good day for you financially, income revenue wise, and what's a bad day if you can share that with us? You know, we have good days where where we might, I, we just did a, a project where we bid to do a sod project, $7,000. All said and done, we, I, after the guys were paid, materials, equipment paid for, about $4,000 in a day. In a day. Which is nice. Um, so that's about a good day? That's a really good Keep day. Keep that consistent yeah. would be nice, right? It's nice to have good days like that, yeah. And what about, um, um, I mean, if you have any bad days, I mean, so, I mean what does that look point, like? So, I mean, at this point, we've gotten kind of far enough along in the game where we're efficient and we know what we're doing and uh, we don't have a lot of really bad days. But okay. um, for me personally, if I can pay my guys, pay the taxes, pay all that stuff, and if I still get to walk home with three or four hundred dollars in my pocket, um, that's a good day. You know, all mm -hmm. the bills are paid, your guys are all paid, and you still made profit, which is, like I said, that's about as worst of the days as it gets. Right, so. and it's not like you have bad days all the time. Yeah, so. no. You've got a pretty clean trailer here, I gotta say. So. Uh, Coach to you, is Thank that what you. they say? It's, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, organization is everything, but tell us a little bit about what we're looking at and what's most important, kind of the, how the tools are yeah. used too. So really for us, it's important to keep everything organized because we have to cram a lot of different tools into one area. So um, the way our trailer is set up, uh, we have these spaces where most of our big saws and stuff sit. Um, these boxes here, you know, these are filled with battery powered tools. So. Okay battery powered drills and saws and grinders. You know, we have uh, our, our laser transit setup that we use for getting our grades perfectly level for a all of one. our um, pavers and sidewalks and stuff like that. Uh, little hand tools and stuff that are easily accessible that yep. we use all the time. Pretty straightforward there. I keep all those up. For a normal landscaper, these are what you need the most. Right, I mean, right. these are the most valuable tools we have and they cost the least amount of money, but um, you know, we, we spend a little bit of extra money to get tools with fiberglass handles because the guys last that, a little longer. They can use the heck out of them. Shovels, this rigs, pitchforks, the... having them all easily accessible. Um, that's a big thing for us. We buy the tools we need for the job. And when you sign another job, you take some of that money and buy the tool that you need for that job. Can't keep and that way you just bit. keep building up and, and tools wear out. So it's a never ending thing. We still, we buy new tools all the time because they you do, use they get worn out. Yep. yep. And you just have to kind of factor that into your prices. But yeah, that's what, that's how we grew was by, um, buying the tools that we needed for the next job that we signed gotcha. you know um it's sometimes it's tough you're like i'm only going to make a thousand dollars on this job and i need a 500 dollars tool but you go buy that 500 dollars tool because then the next time that's all profit what's the secret to your tremendous growth for the company i mean two man crew when you started out and this year you're about to break a million dollars in revenue mm -hmm. If you were to boil it down to two, three things, what would it be? The biggest things are just um, marketing the company. And then as far as on the actual site, just the quality of work and, and really just striving and not being afraid to dream. That's the biggest thing is uh, elaborate on that. You can you really limit yourself in your own thoughts. So when I come to look at a project, a lot of times clients don't really know what they want or the extent of what they want. Right. And what I've found has helped us grow a lot is just being able to dream bigger, you know, with um, your client yeah, during just, the visit. So when you go to talk to them, don't be afraid to, to tell them, um, you know, well, what if you did a, you could do a water feature over here, or you could, instead of just making that grass, you could do something really cool there. That's, uh, and that's one of the things I've really found is that um, a lot of times people are a lot more open to that stuff. And the only reason they haven't brought it up is because they just didn't think about it. I mean, you can never dream too big, you know, just uh, you can always down, you can always scale down your project, but you can't, it's harder to make it bigger once you've started. So start big and just keep pushing for that. And um, that's really, I think the key to our growth and our success is that as we get further along bigger projects then um you know it requires building the company bigger right
I hope you guys enjoyed part one of us sitting down with the owner of BL Landscapes, Brian. What an incredible journey. Uh, it's all about taking care of your customer. The money's the byproduct. Don't think about that. Think about what the customer wants and think big. When you're out there estimating, help the client see what they most, most of the time, they don't know what they want. So you as a landscaping owner, you can help them see the big grand picture. This is part one. Make sure you check out part two. It's right there. And check out our blog. There's a lot more information there for you guys. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, do so right now. Smash that subscribe button and like this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.